What's going on, everyone? A lot of glory. Robert Dosti here, and I am coming to you on this beautiful afternoon um, because I'd like to talk grace and reformation with you. And uh, Lord willing, we will have a special guest on the broadcast here in just a couple of moments. All right? So hang tight with me. I'm going to let some of you guys come into the room. And we are just experiencing the joy of Jesus today. What's up, Elizabeth? Bless you, bless you. And uh, lots of glory. I'm excited. I'm excited about our special guest. Uh, if we can manage to get him on. I know we've been having a little bit of technical difficulties, but come on, Lord, we're just asking you and thanking you for favor. In Jesus' mighty name, there's my wife. Hey, my wife, Millie, it says you're a top fan. Glory, glory. Now, I did send Jeremiah the link to my page. I just hope that uh, that he got it or else he may not know where to look. So um, uh, let me let me know if you see him here on the broadcast. And as soon as he comes on, uh, we will pop him on. And we've got some amazing things to talk about today. So thank you, Jesus. All right, Jeremiah, we're waiting for you. Just waiting for him to show up, and I don't think I've ever done like a split, uh, split screen live from my page before. So hopefully, we can get it all to uh, to work out all right. Okay, okay, he just texted me, so he's coming. Just a minute, guys. Just a moment here. Here we go. All right. Let's see if we can get this to work. We are adding, hopefully not subtracting. <laughs> Patience is a virtue, my friends. There. All right, we're connecting. Are we here? Oh my goodness. Did we make it? Hold on. What's going on here? Can you hear me? I can hear you, man. Hey. All right, guys. Let me know what's up. Do you hear everything okay? Are there any echoes or weird reverb effects going on? <laughs> Is it good? There's my wife, top fan. Woo, Glory. Chris, a friend of Jeremiah's is a friend of mine. Hey, great to meet you, brother. Awesome. You are both clear. We are clear, All Jeremiah. Right. I feel like I just like got a visa into some tough nation or something. Like, ah, oh, finally. We're, that, we're, was, uh, that was a challenge. We were persistent. That's good. You know, it's so strange. I tried to go live uh, once before on my page with a split screen. It would not work. And the only thing that would work was, uh, you know, my profile. So now today it's opposite day, apparently. Huh. <laughs> So what's going on, everyone? Thanks for joining us. Um, I'm Rob Radosti, and I've got an awesome friend here with me today, Jeremiah Johnson. And uh, here in just a minute, we'll tell you guys a little bit about ourselves. You know, I'll, I'll, I can show you who he is, and he can tell you who I am, or vice versa. And uh, But we're here to talk about Jesus. We're here to talk about the gospel. Uh, we're here to make Jesus famous. And so we're asking you guys if you would uh, share the broadcast, and, and I think it's going to bring encouragement, and, and not just encouragement, but understanding to a lot of people. I really feel like um, that there's something about the Holy Spirit wanting to bring clarity and understanding in areas where people have just been having a tough time, you know, under, just grasping certain things when it comes to Scripture and when it comes to the gospel and Christianity. And uh, so welcome, Jeremiah. Thanks for joining me, brother. Good to be here, man. <laughs> um, so you are the pastor of a church. Can you tell the people yeah. real quick uh, where you pastor? Uh, I pastor in uh, I pastor Grace Point Church in Georgetown, Kentucky, and uh, been pastoring there for probably about five years. Five years. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Was that? Did you go into ministry as far as a singular focus when you started pastoring, or did you do anything before that? Like, were you traveling or? doing anything else um well <clears throat> i kind of like i have like two uh like a dividing line in my ministry i have my legalistic days and then i have my discovery of the gospel days you yeah know i, what think, I'm saying? I so, think we, we all kind of have that <laughs> yeah so i mean i had i had about 14 years of legalistic ministry you know before i really you know kind of stepped into the gospel 
And, uh, you know, I did a lot of, did a lot of different types of ministry, you know, um, you know, youth pastor, associate pastor, um, then used to travel with a, a band and we did a lot of ministry as well. Used to run a, a youth center and, and a feeding, a soup kitchen and all that kind of stuff. And it was all great and good. But when, uh, when the gospel, you know, came, you know, was reintroduced back into my life and I had that solid foundation of grace, then I really kind of feel like that's really when my journey began. Even though I learned a lot in legalism, I'm so thankful, you know, for all the things that I learned. But, you know, the gospel turned the water into wine, you know. And so when and then oh. when that happened, I had to kind of make a break from the things that I was involved in. And, and then eventually, you know, we, uh, uh, you know, ended up here pastoring. So, yeah, hopefully that answers the question. No, that's so good. We're going to have to dive into that a little bit, too, because I have, you know, a not the same journey, but, you know, I have a similar type of journey. And, um, yeah. and uh, okay, that's awesome. So, so my name's Rob, for those of you that may not know who I am. And um, I, uh, we've just recently planted a, a hub here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. It's called Church 14. And uh, awesome. it's a kind of a global movement. This is kind of where we're headquartering it. We have a local family and local Bible studies and evangelism. And, you know, we live stream a lot of our stuff. Uh, prior to that, I, for 11 and a half years, I've been a full-time itinerant speaker, conference speaker, you know, a lot of missions, you know, all that good stuff. Um, and, uh, I was delivered from Satan worship and the occult in 2001. And I, I, uh, even though I got saved in 2001, I came into the gospel in 2011. So had a little 10 year period there. And, 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 you know, I kind of, I feel like we should just start off right there with that. Um, okay. Because some of the believers or even non-believers that are watching, they, they may be wondering, like, what do they mean they were, like, in ministry and then they started believing the gospel, like, 10 years later? What, you know? Yeah. And so, you know, some of the believers might be saying, I, I don't understand that. Why would you be in ministry if you don't believe the gospel? I know yeah. exactly what you're saying because I have a very mm -hmm. similar, you know, story. Um, but uh, what, what would you say to those that are wondering, what, what the heck are they talking about? Well, I think we all begin in grace because there's no other way to begin. And um, but then, you know, we begin in grace. We begin, you know, at the cross, nothing to offer, everything to receive and uh, in a place of humility. And then uh, and then a lot of times we're we're basically taught out of that relationship, that grace relationship that we first start in wow. uh, by well-meaning people, you know, good people. They just don't understand. They just are confused about the covenants and they mix the covenants. And as a result, <laughs> yeah. you know, we, we, we have uh, one part legalism, one part grace and, and uh, legalism cancels out grace like salt does, does fresh water, you know? And so, um, so oh, I began goodness. in grace, began in a relationship that was awesome, but then slowly I was taught out of it um, and started wandering down the hallways of legalism. And basically in a nutshell, what that means legalism is, is I'm trying to earn something from God that's already freely given. And the moment I try to earn it, it ceases to be a gift and it becomes a wage. And I become uh, the center of my relationship with God, the good I do and the bad I do. And the focus becomes about me. And uh, that type of, of focus and that type of approach to God is a, eventually becomes an, an extraordinarily heavy burden. It will burn you out because uh, there's yeah. nothing greater than love. Uh, and there's no greater bondage than trying to earn love, trying to earn approval and trying to earn blessing. And so in, in a nutshell, for me, that's what legalism was. And so um, now there was wonderful things that were happening. The spirit of God was moving. I was being taught. Um, I was developing a lot of different things in my life. And, uh, you know, I would say <clears throat> in some ways similar, you know, to the to Saul of Tarsus, you know, similar to the Apostle Paul. He was getting taught at the feet of Gamaliel. He was hearing the word. He was learning the word. And, um, but, you know, at the end of the day, he, he was an enemy to what God was doing in the earth right now. Right. And, um, and so, but once he, you know, was, you know, received Jesus and began to be taught and got established in grace, um, all those things that, that were once perverted and twisted became right and correct when they had a proper foundation. And so, for me, I just basically returned back to my first love, fell back in love in Jesus with Jesus, remembered why I first started, and then my foundation became solid uh, because it was established on grace. And I no longer was trying to earn things 
that were freely given. I just simply believed and received. And then, uh, and so then, yeah, so I kind of, it's a, it's a fresh starting point uh, when you come out of legalism and that heavy yoke. Man, that's so good. And, you know, you've even brought just now a perspective to me that it's like, a, not that I don't, I don't know it. It's just, it's, it's not what I generally think of when I think about coming into grace. And, uh, but dude, that's, that's amazing. What would you say to somebody that they came into the knowledge of Jesus through fear and manipulation mm -hmm. tactics? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I would say that, you know, you can begin a relationship in fear. You can begin it. You know, people can get saved through fear. I did. Um, and, and so, uh, and so in a sense, it's good because it's good to step in, but you can't maintain a relationship based in fear and right. you can't, you certainly can't develop it or really draw near or really even know who God is. Right. And so if someone began that way, um, I would, you know, would say to them that, that man, God is so much better than what you could even imagine. You know, he is love. And, you know, I think when you, first, when you start hearing the gospel again, it can short circuit some of your theology. It can short circuit yeah. some of the thoughts in your mind. That's for sure. But it definitely, it, there's a voice of love that calls to your heart. And even when your mind doesn't understand it, your heart, there's a burning. And just like when Jesus walked on the road of Emmaus with the disciples, said their hearts burn within them. And when I heard the gospel afresh and anew, my heart burned within me. Now my head didn't understand. And I struggled with it, you know, and I actually kind of fought against it a little bit. But slowly, um, you know, as I stepped into the scriptures and realized that, man, this stuff's been there the whole time. Um, you know, that that message of love and grace, it is your father's heart. And so to someone who's dealing with that, uh, I would say, man, your best days are ahead of you. You know, Come on. that's so good. You know, one of the number one areas that <laughs> our ministry receives, you know, slack is uh or i guess flack is the correct word is mm -hmm. uh on that exact thing the message of love mm -hmm. and grace yeah and, um because people tend to get concerned that if you're only focusing on grace that you're actually going to cause immorality to yeah. abound more yeah which yeah. i think is pretty ridiculous however Mm -hmm. uh, I think I, I can see why they might believe that if they've been indoctrinated by a lot of fear. Well, um, so. but you know, you pastor what, and I, I don't like to put things in uh, boxes. However, mm -hmm. um, I would say just like the ancient kingdom of, uh, of Israel was one kingdom, but there were numerous different tribes. <clears throat> there are obviously lots of streams that flow into one you know, main source here in the kingdom. Um, yeah. And so I would say you, you are pastoring and you have a local family of people that are really solid grace based believers. Um, yeah. I know, you know, there are some streams that are more based on the prophetic than anything else. There yeah. are some streams yeah. that are more based on strictly <clears throat> the Bible and not the rhema, but just kind of only the Bible and, the, mm -hmm. you know, a certain understanding of, of the Bible. Um, and so I, I just, here, here's one of the things that I feel like what God is doing in the earth today is he's calling more reformers to challenge some of some things that have kept the church in bondage for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, because I feel like we have fallen from grace in one sense. And when I, when I preach on grace or teach on grace, and one of the first things people do is say, now be careful, brother, I immediately recognize, oh man, we need reformation so bad. Because if we're yeah. saying you're preaching grace, but be careful, you need a mm -hmm. balance. How can grace be balanced? How do you approach that? <laughs> yeah, well, <clears throat> I think that um, the message is such good news and um, it sweeps you off your feet and it's unlike anything you, that is offered to us anywhere else in the world. Uh, no other religion offers a message like this. Exactly. Um, it's contrary to the way man's mind works. Man's right. mind works out of merit as a result of the fall. And so this news comes, and it can be a challenge for people to believe. You know, God said, I'm going to do a work in your day that's going to be so awesome that you're going to have a chance to believe it. And so... The news is so good, and if people just hear sound bites of what we're saying, uh, 
it's understandable that the message could be misconstrued to saying something that it's not. I mean, the same accusation was made against Paul. Yeah, know? exactly. And, uh, you know, he said, people are saying that I am saying, let us do good that evil may come. He said, I would never say that. Their condemnation is just. And then <clears throat> if you look at Peter's letter, he said, you know, some people, some of the things that are taught by Paul um, are, you know, they wrestle with that unto their own destruction. Yeah. And so as they do also the other scriptures. And so there is an opportunity to misunderstand a powerful truth right. and for it to, uh, you know, end up, you know, being destructive. And so, and there are, unfortunately, people who claim to preach the gospel um, who are not really preaching the gospel, you know, and, and the gospel uh, is anti-sin, you know. In fact, it's the only deliverance from the dominion of sin. There's no other deliverance. Right. And um, Absolutely. If, we, and if we look at Scripture and not trite sayings, um, then we'll, we'll determine that, you know, Romans 6, 14 is a reality. Grace is the only thing that sets you free from the dominion of sin. And so <clears throat> it works. Um, it's not based in man's logic or, or man's mind, but it is God's logic, and it does work. It does set you free from the dominion of sin. And so people, they misconstrue it, and they misunderstand it, but it doesn't mean that we need to stop preaching it just because they don't understand it. You know, you got to full, fr full throttle share the good news and kind of let the chips fall where they may. Um, and, and so, but I know that there are people who think, you know, there's too much or, or whatever, and, and, and certainly people can definitely abuse it. I mean, the opportunity to abuse liberty is there. I mean, when the abuse of liberty happens, uh, there's just a lack of maturity. But just yeah. because someone is abusing liberty doesn't mean we shouldn't set them free. Right. Because the only way they're ever going to mature is in a place of liberty. Well, uh, so I understand the people who, who, are, who are concerned and make these, you know, accusations and all that, because they think we're saying something that we're not. But if we just look at what the Bible says, um, grace is the only thing that removes the dominion of sin. Absolutely. Nothing else. That's so good what you said, because, you know, it's kind of like, that would be like using the logic, well, some people abuse money, therefore I don't believe in money. You know, it's, well, but, but no, you can be a, a good steward of money and show how, yeah. how you know, the fruit of, of that instead of just throwing it away. Um, yeah. And the other thing, you know, I noticed is that uh, I, I feel like we've developed a little bit of an unhealthy, not a little bit, a lot of bit <laughs> of an unhealthy prophetic culture where, mm. you know, we, we're, we're living, ba you know, word to word. And I feel like, you know, prophetic word to prophetic word or the next fix. And I feel like if we're not getting our fix on the, the rock solid foundation of the gospel, you know, it's yeah. going to create an unhealthy uh, kind of uh, dependency instead of an interdependency yes. on, your union with Jesus, it becomes about a dependency on other people's gifts and other people's interpretations. And, uh, well, you know, I think, uh, and then we're kind of likely to uh, just kind of take someone else's theory and just adhere to it. And that's one of the things I'm seeing with this hyper grace phenomenon. And, uh, you know, in, I'm, in Romans chapter five, verse 20, I'm there right now, it says, uh, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. And in the Greek, that's actually hupo abound, which is the English word hyper. <laughs> so literally yeah. says grace hyper abounded. And so I feel like those that are, that are accusing quote unquote grace teachers, grace pastors mm -hmm. um, of hyper grace. I think, I think that that term uh, is probably not accurate. I think it would, what would be more accurate would be a fall from grace, not not yeah. some type of hyper. Because that sounds like you're saying, well, God's great. You you have too much of God's grace, uh, and I think yeah. I just feel like that's kind of not not accurate. Well, it's totally contrary to scripture because every time grace is mentioned, it's always mentioned in an abundance in surplus. Right. They which receive an abundance of grace. Grace right. is never in scripture given out in drops. Right. It's always an overwhelming way, especially if you study the Greek, you know? Yeah. And uh, so for them to make an accusation, yes, it, it is a hyper grace. I mean, if you look at it in the Greek, it's massive, it's huge, it's big, but it'll wash sin out of your life, man. You know? Right, right, right. <clears throat> so that's cool. I, I just like to, you know, I like people to hear this and to get some perspective because sometimes, you know, we get, we have a certain conviction about something or feel like, 
we get a real red flag about something and then we'll go release an article on it or, or do a writing about it. And we'll kind yeah. of start this whole army of kind of angry, offended, bitter people, you know, yeah. behind us. Yeah. And I've, I mean, I think all of us at one point or another have done something like that years ago yep. and stuff like that, yep. you know, yep. um, my, my journey uh, with grace has been, you know, when I initially, um, came to know Jesus. Uh, I was a devil worshiper and I was June mm -hmm. of 2001. Mm -hmm. I was uh, at a Christian music festival to convert as many to Satan as I could and wow. ended up having this wild encounter with Jesus and it completely mm -hmm. changed my life. I was delivered of almost everything completely overnight, but it took a few wow. years for me to get rid of some of the baggage that was still associated with yeah. all the stuff I was you know, walking in, all the yucky at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, but I, I very quickly, you know, I got plugged into a, a tongue talking Bible believing church. And, um, but, but, you know, it was a full gospel church and, and, and they're great people, you know, but I, I, I think yeah. I picked up some things, um, some unhealthy patterns. And, and, and by the time I ended up really getting into evangelistic ministry, I ended up getting caught up in a lot of politics of, you know, the who's who and the charismatic zoo. And, yeah. um, and then I got caught up in a lot of works and, and now I was raised seventh day Adventist. And so I was raised mm. under the literally almost fully under the law. I mean, we, wow. I, I knew the law, like the back of my hand. I mean, we, mm. we kept the Sabbath Friday night to Saturday night. We like wow. almost everything you could imagine. And so <laughs> I found myself at a time, uh, probably a few years after I came to know Jesus, maybe six, seven years after I came to know Jesus, uh, in this place where I was, I was striving so hard to make God happen, and it was all about yeah. what what I could do. Uh, it was all about, and 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 one day, you know, I burned out. I just burned out really bad because mm. I was trying to make revival happen. I was trying to, you know, how, you know, should I fast ten extra days so that I can be as anointed as Benny Hinn or as this guy yeah. or as that guy? Now, yeah. I love those guys. That has nothing to do with those guys. It was just sure, my, sure. my thought process. And I drowned myself in my own works. And mm. I ended up burning out. And I didn't go fall into some gross sin or do anything. I just, I just had it. I was like, God, I don't want to be in ministry anymore. I'm done, you know? Yeah. Um, and the Lord began to visit me in dreams. And he began to minister to me. And I'll never forget one of the first things that he said to me in, in a dream during this season, and, and this was in 2011, he said, Rob, you don't really know who I am. And wow. it offended the hell out of me, if I could just be so <laughs> blunt. It offended me so bad. And I was just like, how can you say something like that? I've been preaching yeah. your gospel for the past blah, 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 blah years, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and then finally, I humbled myself and I was like, okay, what do you mean? What, what does that even mean? And yeah. the Lord said to me, you don't understand the dynamics of this relationship. And, and I'm like, wow. well, teach me, you know? And he said, if you never preach at another healing revival again, if you never mm -hmm. lead another mission trip, if you never lay your hands on another person, if you never cast out another devil, if you never get published on some big or go on some TV show and preach my name again, he said, the yeah. way that I feel about you will never change. Mm. And it completely, I was literally like, I need to make sure that lines up with scripture, you know, <laughs> just like, <laughs> you know? and it, yeah. dude, it, it, it just floored me. And for the next seven nights, I was just caught into the, and it wasn't like some 22nd dimension of some weird realm. I was sure, just sure. caught in, into the father's heart. And I was just having these ecstatic experiences with God wow. and, and, and it changed everything on the inside of me and, and the way that I did everything. I remember one of the things the Lord said was, you know, you have, you've never resolved to see Christ being revealed in people. You've only resolved to seeing sin and demons being revealed in people. You, you don't even wow. try to see Jesus being revealed in people. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I never thought about, it. you know, I just, I'm yeah. just preaching what I thought was the gospel, you know? And, yeah. but when the Lord told me how he felt about me, I thought, my God, what if everyone on earth could know how God feels about them? You know, and it just, mm -hmm. it just began to shift, you know, the way that I, that I did things. And, um, you know, so that's kind of brought us to the point where we are now. And, um, and, and I awesome. feel like how has the church by and large 
I mean, not all of them, but how have we missed <laughs> the the gospel? <laughs> you know, how, how has that happened? Mm -hmm. Is that a direct question? <clears throat> it's a trick question. No. Okay. Well, I think <laughs> I think uh, you know the enemy is anti Christ. Yeah. Um, he's not anti church. You know, he uh, oh, that's and good. I say that. I say that in the sense that, you know, some of his best work is done in church, you know, and um, because and it, it's, and it was so in, in Jesus's time as well. You know, Jesus's primary antagonists were not the Romans, not the Roman culture, not the sinners. True. <clears throat> it was the religious people of the day. And so he's antichrist. And so if he can remove the gospel from the church, then it turns into this behemoth of contorted evil um, that wow. is a form of godliness that denies the true power, which is the love of God, which is Jesus Christ. And so right. it, and then it ends up becoming <clears throat> an agent of acceleration for the dominion of sin, because the, the, um, and, and I say that in humility, but, be, but because, you know, the strength of sin is the law, the strength of sin is condemnation. And so these people who who love who love God and who are so thankful, they're actually pouring gasoline on the fires of rebellion, and they don't even realize they're doing it. And so the wow. author behind <laughs> hiding the good news um, is the enemy. He he wants to pull he wants to take Jesus out of center stage of the church and relegate him to a small closet in the back that we pull out for for lost people for people who are not saved. And, and the reality is, without a steady, I love you from God, without a steady presentation and revelation of the gospel, of seeing Jesus regularly, then, then, then the saints and the children of God uh, become emaciated and love-starved and hurt, and they become abusers. And so, wow. you know, he's, he's the reason. You know, we lost this thing for, for several hundred years in the Dark Ages. You know, we, we had to have Martin Luther rise up. Exactly. And do a, a you know um, you know a a, a renovation a, a what's the word that you use reformation reformation thank you to bring forth a reformation and so now I think the stage is set to bring forth the reformation on a grander and larger scale than what they enjoyed in the 1500s because of technology because of this information age we can get the gospel out there and we can restore Jesus back to center stage of his own church. So that all these beautiful things like the prophetic and healing and, and scripture and all these wonderful things that are amazing with the proper foundation can flourish and become what they're supposed to be, which is a revelation of the goodness of God. And I feel like we're on the wow. cusp of that on a worldwide scale. And uh, it's an exciting time to be in. Wow. Man, that's <clears throat> amazing what you said. Uh you know, and, and my obviously, I love how you said before how this is the same stuff Paul was being accused of. And I think even Peter himself, you know, obviously struggled with stuff. Paul. Sure. And, and it's, you know, Paul was really the first one to get the revelation of, of what this covenant actually entails for, you know, yeah. uh, for the entire earth. I mean, Jesus said it a million times, but they didn't really, I don't think they really caught it, you know, <laughs> um, until he was well post-resurrection. Um, but I, I found something, and I'll, I just want to release this on the video because I feel like it may help some of the viewers just unlock um, something that is hiding in plain sight. And it's in Second Corinthians. We all kind of quote, especially in the charismatic church, you know, we quote Second Corinthians 10, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. Okay, we, we know, we most of us know that. But right before that, and that's like, you know, in the context, in verse 2, Paul says, But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some who think of us as though we walk according to the flesh. And basically mm -hmm. what he's saying right here is, I am constantly getting accused by my own peers, by those that are supposed to know God, of mm -hmm. preaching license to sin that's what he's saying yeah. right here yep. then yep. he goes on and this is the context of what we're of, of our famous charismatic quotes uh then mm -hmm. he goes on and says for though we walk in the flesh we don't war after the flesh we are mm -hmm. basically casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of god um so what he's saying is behind 
these accusations that the gospel or grace is a license to sin, that the inner workings of that is demonic. These are strongholds. Yeah. And yeah. see, a, a lot of times I think, I think we think about demonic and strongholds as drugs, alcohol, you know, but I think we're missing as the church the entire facet uh, well, sir. that that principalities and powers. Now, we know Jesus is the head of them. I don't identify with them. I don't get concerned sure. about them. I know that they're conquered. However, if we give place to this, uh, that we can have an entire religious facade, an entire empire that's completely fueled by um, preaching a gospel, but behind it is accusation. And, and it's, it, it, it really causes people to fall from grace instead of embrace grace. And I never I realized that that was uh, the, the context of what, when Paul says, we don't, although we walk in the flesh, we don't war after the flesh. He was talking in reference to those who are attacking him and accusing him of preaching a false Excuse gospel me. when he was actually <laughs> preaching grace. <laughs> that's great, good, man. man. You know, it's and, really good. and I think that's an area that we are going to see reformation massively in the body of Christ. I, yeah. I, I feel like we're already seeing it. But um, let me let me ask you this. This was a question that I would kind of already purposed to ask you. Uh, you know, you've been pastoring for five years. You're you're assisting. You're walking with people every day in the renewing of the mind mm -hmm. and in grace. What would you say is a, is at least one major, major thing or mindset uh, that you see kind of rampant in the church that needs to begin to shift if they're going to really be able to embrace um, the gospel for what it is, the good news, not the conditional news, not the, yeah. you know, but the good <clears throat> news and really get it? Well, I think that, <clears throat> you know, in people that are already present and who've been turned on to the gospel, um, I, I'll speak to two groups. I'll speak to the, those that have not been turned on and those that have been. That's good. Uh, the ones that have been, I think that what they have to do is relax um, and enjoy the journey. Uh, you know, if you're... I don't if, know if we know how to do that half the time. I know, man. <laughs> I know. Because what happens is, is people they want it so bad and they want to get their hearts established in it. And they recognize that it's that they, what they've been in is error. And so they put pressure on themselves right. to get it. And then when they don't get it the way they think they should get it, then the enemy actually condemns them for not getting it. Wow. And then they get hard on themselves. And so I think that, you know, wow, if good. I'm, if I'm on my way, to, to Myrtle Beach, and I've made the decision to travel there. You, 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 should, you should be, by the way. Yeah, I know. Well said. Well said. <laughs> I, I would love to suffer for Jesus on Myrtle Beach. You know, I'm all the kids. But uh, if I was going there, I'm going in a direction. I'm going to be there. I've already made the decision, but I need to stop and enjoy the journey and not be a, impatient on, on the journey. And that's what I see a lot of people do is they get really impatient and they get down on themselves and they just need to relax, enjoy the ride, just feed on Jesus, and the analysis will take care of itself. Um, I think it's a little bit more of a challenge for the analytical mind, uh, for those that need to cross the T's and dot the I's, um, and it, sometimes to embrace it. Uh, but in the very same breath, relax, enjoy the ride. Now, to those who have not yet been you've turned on to it or seen it, the legalists, I would say the, the biggest challenge is, you know, if you've been in a relationship that's unhealthy and you've been in an abusive relationship, it's all you've ever known. And, it, and if you look at people who've had patterns of, of being in abusive relationships, that's what they know. And so when, so when someone comes along that actually loves them and cares about them, they look suspiciously at this person thinking, well, there must be something wrong with them. Because in their mind, all they've ever known um, is abuse. And wow. so I think that we bring that over into the church and, and the people that are under legalism, all of a sudden we have this message of good news and this loving Savior in Jesus. And then because they've been in the dynamics of, of, of condemnation and guilt and control and abuse, they look suspiciously at the good news because they've never known a healthy church relationship before. And so, wow. for the, so that, that would be my, 
the, what I would kind of address towards those that are in legalism. And, and really, the only, the only diploma of legalism is failure. It's the only way you come out. <clears throat> you got, I mean, you basically, you got to get tired of going around the mountain and ceasing your own strength and fail. And so you can't really pull somebody out. They've got to come to the end of themselves before they come out. Um, but that would be kind of the two prong words I would give to, to, you know, those that are in it, relax, enjoy the rides. Those that aren't, they have to learn how to have a healthy relationship because they've never known it. Just like God spoke to you. He said, you don't know who I am, you know? So anyway, <clears throat> bro, that's, that's so good. And I think really that's what happened to me. And it didn't happen in a sense of, you know, I came to the end of myself, um, in a sense of, uh, I, I felt this need to judge everyone else. And, but what I did is I felt this pressure to perform. And I think that's what really, yeah. what really, I finally broke in that. And uh, I yeah. know that, you know, there's, and I'll give you an example. I have a lot of friends and I minister a lot within the prophetic revival streams, Kansas City prophet streams. And I love these guys. And, um, and, and really our theology is really not all that different. Um, but I think one of the things I, I would get really caught up in this striving, let's pull heaven down, let's make it happen. Uh, and then I, before I realized it, it would become all about me and it would become all about um, my yeah. gift, you know, and it would become all about uh, me, you know, having the key to people's breakthrough and me bringing, being the one yeah. into the region and me, you know, me, me, me. Um, and yeah. I think I kind of came to the, to the end of myself, you know, in that, uh, but I see that a lot where well, that's kind of where people have a hard time with grace is they feel like, well, remember, James says, you know, faith without works is, is dead or, you know, something sure. along those lines. So they say, so you yeah. still need you still need to do the work. You still need good work. But but it's kind of like the good works are a result of the grace and the faith that's working in you. And it's yes. more of a fruit than something you have to do to maintain Yes. Dead grace and faith. You get yes. what I'm saying? Yes. Yes, I totally agree. Uh, and I know it's it's tough because people feel like, well, you know, if I really have Jesus and, and if I'm really going to change the world and I'm really going to make a difference in the church, <clears throat> then I've got to do. And Paul said, I've worked harder than all of you. But he was working from a different revelation. Yes. Not, not toward, but from, I think, is the, yes. the difference. And yeah. And I feel like in this Reformation, that's really one of the things that we're going to see as people begin to, to understand they're not living toward God. They're living from him, that, that, that he's yes. our roots. I mean, we're, we're one. There's no separation yes. there. And um, but Good. what would you say to those that kind of struggle with, because I know even my wife, she's got a very analytical mind and I love it because it balances me out. I'm just, woo. Yeah. You know? And yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I could kind of care less about whatever. I'm just like a Holy Ghost lush. You know what I mean? And um, but when, when we first really become, began to come into an understanding of, of charis, you know, of grace, uh, she just struggled. And uh, honey, I hope you don't mind me sharing this, mm -hmm. that our lives are out there for the world to see regardless. So, um, but she struggled really bad with like, but, but what do I do? And I was like, yeah. nothing. Don't, yeah. you, don't, yeah. you, you have to get free of, of the feeling <clears throat> that you have to make something happen and realize yeah. what you've already been given. Because, and that's what we're going to grow in is what we've already been given. And how yeah. can we help people? come into an understanding. She said, you are woo. How can we help people come into an understanding, you know, as leaders in the body of Christ? And I don't mean that as in we lord it over people, look at our empires. I mean, sure. as people in the body of Christ who say, hey, my ceiling will be your floor. Let me add value to you and, and push yeah. you forward. You know, how can we come alongside people and help people uh, get free of that need to feel like they have to make it all happen and or if yeah. they're or if they're under grace they feel like they're not doing anything and like they're going to be yeah. lazy or they feel like they're not going to yeah. be fruitful do you see what i'm saying absolutely um i think that especially if you've come out of legalism and you've had that heavy uh yoke upon you for so long uh you need god will take you away and give you a season of rest because you've been you've been doing in order to become for so long that you've had the cart in front of the horse, you've wore yourself out. And exactly. with the, with the good news of the gospel is we become um, when we believe. And then our being is primary. Our doing is secondary. Comes out and if we, yeah, man, if we do in order to be, 
we put ourselves under a heavy yoke and we'll be in a state of performance, regardless of how much revelation we have on everything else. Right. And so what, what, what Jesus said, you know, come learn of me. My yoke is easy. And my burden is light. He said, man, this thing's supposed to be easy and light. Not that our lives are going to be easy and light. There's going to be challenges. But as far as our relationship with God, this thing should be easy and light. And so there's that season of um, whew, resting, Lord. that season of Sabbath, um, as you become comfortable in your own skin and your being becomes strong. And then out of that place of being loved and being, the Spirit of God and Scripture will lead you to do. But you will be doing as a loved son. You will be doing as a loved daughter so that the love that's coming to you can begin to go through you in the form of action. Now, when you are doing these things and you're doing the ministry and you're doing the things that you're doing, you're not doing it to become. You're not doing it to get loved. You're not even doing it to get blessed. You are simply doing it as a result of overflow of being loved. And then in partnership with the Holy Spirit, Spirit of God is going to lead you to do this and lead you to do that. But it's going to be out of a place of rest and faith. And uh, it becomes something that's a whole lot of fun rather than being something that's a horrible burden. Wow. Oh, my gosh. I'm getting hit with the glory here. I feel the glory really. Heavy. Amen. My wife said um, she it was hard for her because she couldn't take credit for anything. And I think that's like, man, mm, that's so good. That's because huge. It, it's, it is. And, you know, the thing is, people... Uh, we're kind of, we're kind of, uh, well, our, our carnal mind is kind of built to want to, to be able to say, look what I did. Look, I, look what I can take yes. credit for. And I, and that's, Huge. I think that's the essence of Jesus saying, whoever wants to really believe this and be with me needs to deny themselves. And it's not like a, some, some Gnostic thing or some grow a beard and go live in the wilderness, but, but it's more like you have to be willing to forsake everything that you ever thought you'd be able to take credit for because only i can yeah. single-handedly <laughs> oh i'm getting hit yes. right now only i can say yeah. that's pretty heavy right there uh only i can single-handedly do this for you and i'll do it as you but you've got to allow me and just participate instead yeah. of trying to you know make this happen and um i know i yeah. had a pastor one time said don't preach that finished work of the cross stuff at my church and and I said, why? And he said, wow. because my people are lazy enough. They don't need another excuse to not do anything. And, and so right Man. there, I, I'm like, okay, I'm not going to get oh. angry because the understanding here is completely different. And, and, and I'm sure. not going to just yeah. get offended, you know. And uh, so instead, I tried to just demonstrate that by no means is grace some kind of slothfulness or, or laziness. There's actually... Uh, a greater fruitfulness because you are yes. now living out of him and not out of your own works. You know? Yes. <laughs> you are living as a loved child, right? A loved child will, will uh, perform better than one that's trying to perform for love. Uh, but it's hard to, to convey that always to someone who's on the other side of that, you know? Yeah. But it's okay. Yeah, man. It, it's just, Oh, it's just so good. I really feel like all the cards are on the table for uh, a fresh reformation and, you know, yeah. uh, obviously, after Constantine did what he did and, and kind of the liturgical system was kind of reinstituted and mixed with all kinds of stuff and in the name of, you know, Christianity, um, we ended up in the Dark Ages for a thousand years. And, uh, yeah. and then, like you said, Martin Luther finally, and this is not an anti-Catholic thing either. I love so much about the Catholic Church, but Martin yeah, Luther absolutely. finally rose up and said, okay, why are we going to men for forgiveness? Why, what, what's up with this? What's up with that? And, um, and, and since that point, it's like God has been restoring to the church what we allowed to slip away, you know, and, yeah. and, and you see in the 1600s, 1700s, you see and all Paul these Paul prophesied things. that it would happen, too. He knew it was going to happen. Right, right. Yeah. Maybe and, uh, not interrupt you, but just want to throw that out there. No, you, no, that's absolutely yeah. right. And, and I feel like we're at a point right now, almost in 2020, where God is going gonna, is gonna, to, where the church is going to be in a place again where they have 2020 vision. And, good, and I feel man. like what that's that good. means is they're going to, the, their lens is finally going to be Christ, the hope of glory again, and not all of this good. voodoo, doo doo, you hear what you got to do and who you got to be, yeah. and, uh, you know, how you've got to act. Yeah. Uh, and, and I feel like, you know, having honest discussions like this and dialogue is really healthy because uh, people are going to see that this is not just some fly by night movement, some renegade, you know, people that call themselves reformers that think they're going to come and, 
you know, lead the church into some new revelation. This is not a new revelation. This oh, is the original, years old. the only revelation <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is, yeah. is, you know, the mystery of the ages is Christ, the hope of glory. Um, and yeah. uh, man, I, I'm just so excited about, you know, how God is raising you up as a voice for his church and many others, you know, so thank you. I really appreciate your time. And uh, I feel, I'm feeling really pretty good. drunk. Uh, and when I say drunk, I mean in the Holy Spirit right now. Um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. It, it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, so where can uh, people find out, you know, more information about your church and your ministry? I know they can obviously okay. follow you on your Facebook profile. Do you have any sure. other links yeah we um our church website is gracepointgeorgetown.com uh that has uh like all of our church videos and all of our church information I, my itinerant ministry is jjm.life jjm.life okay um, jjm.life that's got additional uh content and the you know ability to buy some of my books and products and stuff like that cool. and also you know the itinerant ministry schedule as well we do a uh, grace camp uh, for kids, yeah, we do that, that in, uh, in Ohio in the beginning of August, and uh, we did our first one last year, and it was awesome. And just want to take this revelation and give it to the young people. So, uh, so yeah, those are the two primary ways outside of social media. Very cool. You know, the beach would probably be good for the young people. I agree, brother. <laughs> I agree. Well, my my hope, my hope, and my dream is to uh, is to start more camps. Oh, you know, great. like I said, we, we want to do multiple camps, you know, and so we're still, you know, we're, you know, we're, and we're tagging in with some, uh, so yeah, so yeah, man, let's, that sounds great. Very you know, cool. Praise Very God. cool. Yeah. Little glory retreat. Amen. Um, that's great. What are some of the books that you've written? I'm just curious. Okay. Um, first book that I wrote was staying connected and, uh, it's basically a, uh, just a, dissertation against condemnation and uh, fruitfulness being a result of resting and being in the vine oh. as opposed to striving. And, uh, wow. you know, just that was my first book and, uh, you know, very much just exposing condemnation for what it is and recognizing that our fruitfulness is just a result of us receiving life from Jesus and not our own strength. And wow. uh, that was my first one. And then my second one is uh, freedom. And uh, that one, I, I share my testimony and deliverance from drug addiction, alcohol, alcoholism, atheism, all the crazy stuff that I was wow. involved in. <laughs> um, and then, you know, and got free from. And then in the book, I also share how I go into, into bondage in the church, you know, the legalistic bondage end of things, which was more difficult to get free from than the drug addiction and alcoholism. And atheism, no, wow, you that's know? wild. Yeah. So there's, it's kind of a two part testimony thing um, that I share in that book. Uh, that book is always free. Uh, God told me to make that book free so people can go to jjm.life. They can order that book and awesome. get a digital download or they can order it. We'll send it to them for free. And it's basically just my testimony in a nutshell. Very getting cool. set free from those two bondages. And then uh, I wrote um, the gospel of grace. Why do leaders refuse to preach it? That was Ooh, my. Wow. Yeah. Real, real popular title, right? <laughs> our, our, our leadership here at Church 14 might need to go through that. That would be good. Uh, yeah, so well, it's, it's, um, it's a book that, you know, it just kind of, uh, it shares some of my testimony about, you know, the kind of the abuse I've been through in church. And then it also kind of reveals the mindset behind why, you know, if you look at, in, in one of the things God led me to do is look at the life of Jonah. Jonah was given a message to set people free. Yeah. And rather than share that message that was going to deliver them, he ran because he wanted people to get what they deserved. Right. And, um, and that's the mindset from the same mindset today. Somehow. Yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and so, but I mean, ultimately the book really is to not throw these leaders under the bus, but bring compassion to them. Uh, you know, every soul is one donkey slip away from becoming a Paul, you know, and everybody <laughs> needs, Amen. Because, hey, we were all that guy. You know right. what I'm saying? Yep. And everybody needs an Ananias who's willing to come and pray so that the scales can be removed away. And so at the end of the day, the book is really um, compassion towards these leaders rather than because we don't war against flesh and blood. They're not our enemies. The enemy's our enemy, you know. Right. And then uh, and so anyway, so that and then I'm almost finished with my latest book. And it's uh, it's talking about his love to us and through us. 
and it's basically a book about the love of God. And uh, I'm I'm nearing my my final final lap on that, and that should be out this summer. So, wow, that's Amen. awesome, man! Very cool, very very. <laughs> Thank cool. you, bro. Yeah, Thank so you. you guys go ahead and check that out. Um, we've got, you know, me and my wife, we also have our testimony books. I've got an evangelism book. And then this one just came out um, toward, well, like August of last year, Professor Rob's Big Bad Doctrine Detox. It is, it's a trip, okay? It's, uh, I'm not going to lie, it's crazy. Um, there are 10 lessons, and the purpose of it is to detox you from bad indoctrination concerning who God is awesome. so that you can really get a revelation of grace. It's a little bit offensive to some people. I'm not going to lie. If you've got a religious spirit, you're, you're definitely going to be offended. Um, and uh, however, my favorite thing about the book, and there's, there is satire, humor, and sarcasm. And some Christians have trouble with that, especially in the South. But Jesus himself and even Paul were quite sarcastic. Paul, big time. Uh, yeah. yeah, at times. Like, for example, the Galatians, when he's like, you want to go get circumcised? I hope you cut it all off. I mean, there's some crazy stuff, you know, where I'm yeah. like, wow, he said that, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I think one of my favorite things about this book is, you know, for me, what I really struggled with growing up was the idea of this violent God in the Old Testament. And uh, I'll just yeah. say this straight up. I do not subscribe to Marcionism, which is where we say that the Old Testament was not God and only the New Testament is God. No, I believe the yeah. entire scripture testifies of Jesus. And uh, yeah. but, but remember, God was veiled in the Old Testament. And so right. we talk about covenants and was God really violent? And if he was, uh, why was he violent? And it leads into uh, how Jesus actually what Jesus actually set us free from with the new covenant. I mean, just some really cool stuff. I do free teachings every Tuesday night in our Facebook group, and I actually teach lessons out of the book and all that. So if you guys that are watching are interested, you can get in on that, and um, we'll post the links. It's called Church 14 Family Online. And uh, Jeremiah, you live stream a lot of your teachings as well, don't you, on your profile? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, I, uh, we, do, we do our Sunday mornings, um, and then I periodically just kind of do short videos. Cool. And, yeah. uh, and I know you always have a lot of really powerful one-liners to you popping out there. And I'm yeah. just like, it's one yeah. of those, it's those things where you read it and three days later, you're still like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. it's just, yeah. it's just still hitting you, you know? Um, well, it's awesome guys. Listen, if you're in the, uh, Georgetown, Kentucky, that's not too far from Lul, is it? I say Lul. No, that's it. Any way you want to say it, man, it's the <laughs> South. You can, you can say it however you want to. It's about an hour away from Lul, so it's not too okay. far. And so if you guys are passing through, you know, make sure to stop, check out Jeremiah's church, Grace Point, Georgetown. And um, we're in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, where you're going to come on vacation and visit us this summer. Come um, on, that's right. We've got a little storefront here. It's called Church 14. Our slogan is it's a movement. It's a family. It's a Holy Ghost party. We get crazy. Uh, every Friday night, we have worship cafes, coffee houses, Bible Jeopardy, and all kinds of fun games and stuff. And uh, so, so all of you that are watching are welcome to come and visit us as well. If you're in the region, uh, if you need home churches, either in the Louisville, Kentucky area or Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, come and join the tribe. We'd love to just hang out with you and, and uh, feast on grace, feast on the Passover lamb. Yeah. Amen. Well, yeah. uh, dude, thanks for your time. And I think we should do yeah, it again. Thank this you, was bro. a lot of fun. I agree. I really enjoyed this. It yeah, it's really a lot. Cool. Once we finally managed to get it to work. <laughs> yeah. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, right? But, uh, but against the airwaves. Um, <laughs> anyway, we'll bless you guys. And hey, listen, guys, um, share the video. Don't forget to share the video. Uh, I'm going to put this on my YouTube channel as well and, you know, put it on some of our other streams, including the Bliss List. And let me tell you guys what that is real quick, because Jeremiah is actually going to be on the Bliss List here shortly. Um, he's got yeah. some incredible articles that are really going to encourage you guys. Um, and so here's what I want you to do. On your Facebook search bar, type in the Bliss List. It's B-L-I-S-S -S List, L-I-S-T. And uh, what we're going to do is we want to be your number one resource for prophetic encouragement from the correct side of the cross. <laughs> that's sure, kind of that's kind of how we're coining it because there's a lot of prophetic voices that prophesying according to an old covenant or you know yeah. the, uh, uh, even in the spirit of Elijah, you know like we don't we don't we don't like that. We don't do that. We don't believe that's how God's running things these days. And um and so go and like the bliss list and what we're doing is a few times a week we are uh releasing articles from uh, relevant prophetic voices who prophesy according to better covenant.
pro what we call Good, better man. covenant prophecy according so to post resurrection okay um, yeah. and Jeremiah is going to is going to be writing for that and I think his articles mm -hmm. are really going to encourage you guys uh, my wife's on there. I'm on there. We've got Dr. Lynn Hiles. Um, it's going to be mm -hmm. one of the next articles. Uh, we just had awesome. an amazing phone call. Matt Spinks. Uh, we're going to have uh, Ivan Roman. So we're going to have a lot of really great contributors. Some of our own leadership here at Church 14, pastors and teachers. And I think that's going to be a great resource for you guys. So check out the Bliss List. Make sure you like it. And uh, you'll see Jeremiah's you know, material on there shortly as well. All right, brother. Awesome. Glory. Amen. Well, Father, we just thank you for everyone watching. Lord, I just ask you to fill them with joy unspeakable and full of glory as, yeah. as they walk out this glorious, beautiful gift that is your grace. Lord, and I thank you that as they learn to sink into you and sink into daddy's lap, that they will actually be more fruitful than they were ever were trying to make yeah. things happen and trying to yeah. force things down and trying to open the heavens when they're already open. Father, we just thank you in Jesus' name, Lord. Uh, and if there's anyone that's suffering lack or, or disease or sickness in their body, Lord, I thank you today, right now, uh, for complete wholeness. We thank you that for complete salvation in every cell of their body. We thank you that is manifesting in them right now. If there's financial need, yes. Father, we ask you yes. for over and above abundance. Father, if there's, a, if there's a, a demonic oppression or religious, legalistic manipulation, control in the form of witchcraft, Father, we thank you right now for freedom. Whom the sun sets yes. free is free. And we thank you that your grace breaks every last chain. And Lord, if we're sitting there in condemnation, it's only because we're keeping ourselves in a, in a prison cell that you've blown open with your dynamite from the inside. Mm -hmm. And Lord, we say we are no longer slaves, except that we are enslaved to your righteousness. And it's not our mm -hmm. fault. <laughs> mm -hmm. Woo! Glory. Wow. Amen. In Jesus' name. All right, guys. We love y'all. Yes, Go follow Amen. Jeremiah's profile so you can get his updates. And um, this is my page. I've also got a profile and, and the groups and all that. And anyway, we look forward to next time. We love all of you, and we'll talk to you Amen. soon. Thanks for joining right. me, Jeremiah. Hey, man. Thanks. I'm glad to be here, brother. Stay drunk on Jesus, guys. <laughs>